Remembering his selfless services and exceptional leadership abilities, we will now pay tribute to our respected founder director. I now invite Dr. N. Venkata Chilapati, Dean in Charge, Research, Consultancy and International Relations, Niftim Tanjau, to please deliver the welcome address. Respected <coughs> Director, Niftim Tanjau, Distinguished Professor, Dr. Digbir Jais, today's chief guest, registrar, head of the departments, teaching faculties and non-teaching staff, and my dear students. <coughs> Good morning to all of you. Today, we are all assembled here for the endowment lecture, Dr. Subramanian endowment lecture. By this time, the students might be know about who is this legendary visionary scientist, Dr. V. Subramanian. Those who have not, for the pressures, maybe there will be a video you will know about who is he, why we have to <coughs> remember him, all these things. So, such a legendary visionary scientist. Dr. V. Subramani. So today is his death anniversary and we are remembering him for his service he has rendered to this institute as well as the, the whole food technology fraternity. We can proudly say he is the father of food technology in India. So now we, you know that importance of Dr. V. Subramani. So, with these few words, I would welcome our director, Dr. M. Loganathan, for his wonderful suggestions and in the planning of arranging this event. I welcome you, sir. And I wholeheartedly welcome our chief guest, Dr. Digbir Jayas, the incoming president and vice chancellor of the Lethbridge University and the distinguished professor and uh, former vice president of research, University of Manitoba, Canada. I request our director to welcome him with a bouquet. Welcome you, sir, for this Neptun Tanjau. I welcome the registrar, faculties, non-teaching staffs, and all the students who have come here. I welcome you all once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. To provide an introduction about the endowment lecture and institute awards, I invite Dr. M. Loganathan, director in charge, Niftim Tanjau. With his expertise in the field of storage entomology, he has served the Institute for over 23 years and has handled multiple sponsored research projects and consultancy services in this field. He is also services, serving as Dean in charge of academics. So please. Most respected guest of uh, today. Dr. Digvir Jayas, Dean Research and International, Registrar, faculty members, staffs and my dear students, very good morning to all. So today we are gathered here for the endowment lecture. 
it is organized on the day of uh, death anniversary of our founder dr v subramaniam we were telling about the our founder just i want to tell our uh, services to the nation because our uh, guest came after four years he was uh, here during 2018 for uh, i craft that was the uh, great function on the conference international conference we organized after that due to corona we are not able to continue with that hope we will plan for the next year Niptam Tanjavur is uh, doing lot of service not only for the students and also for the farmers and stakeholders of uh, food industry. First thing is for the students we are offering B.Tech food technology four year program the admission process through JE uh, and uh, JOSA is admitting our students. We have well established facilities for students for almost all the courses still we are uh, creating more facilities for them because there is a basic things required for the students in the case of mtech we are offering three courses mtech food technology in food process engineering food process technology in food safety and quality assurance similarly we are offering uh, phd in food technology uh, in food process engineering and uh, um, uh, food process technology so we got uh, INA status during October uh, 2021. So now we moved all the students from uh, TNAU of, uh, that is affiliating university earlier. Now we started issuing our own degree program. Almost uh, first, first batch we have issued for the first batch of uh, B.Tech, M.Tech and Ph.D. Shortly we are going to conduct the first convocation. And at the same time, we are also in the process of preparing new ordinance, that is rules and regulation for the academic event, in align with uh, other INA institutes like IITs, NITs, it is under process. We got our Senate and board meeting this month, so once it is ready, we are fully independent and we are going to follow our own rules and regulations and our own syllabus that will help for the students who are building their knowledge and skill uh, based on the requirement of the industry and also for the higher studies, that is what our objective. And for the stakeholders, we have NABL accredited laboratory. We are uh, we have almost uh, 180 parameters accredited with the NABL. So we are getting lot of commercial samples. We are doing lot of service. We are making lot of income, and at the same time, we are doing service to the nation. And our lab is also um, FSA referral lab. So whatever legal samples are there, we are uh, analyzing and we are helping for the country. And we have a very nice incubation center. Actually, we started uh, long back and uh, we created so many facilities and the thing is creating an incubation center is, is not easy and at the same time creating is also possible but continuous service is very important all equipment should be under working condition and we have to run as and when the stakeholders are visiting the institute that is what we are doing so we have created so many incubation centers across the country uh, based on that our um, ministry of food processing industries is uh, providing funding for creating infrastructure of incubation facilities. We are getting lot of trainees almost uh, throughout the year we have trainees at our incubation center from um, at state government and central government and also individuals across the country and also we are doing consultancy and we are uh, providing our equipment and the incubation services the, in, those who are interested to create their own industry they can you make use of our equipments and uh, they can get expertise and they can go for starting the industry that is what our um, motive and we have um, two center of excellence only center of excellence in crane science because we are uh, expertise in providing training and also service to the nation so we have rice mill also so people are bringing their raw material and processing they are taking it back similarly we have started recently our uh, center of excellence non-thermal processing uh, just now we have visited it is uh, uh, the first center of excellence in non-thermal processing in India. We have almost all the advanced equipments. So many demands from other uh, institutes and also industry for working on that. But still, we are our students are getting expertise in that one. And we have all academic laboratories and also we are um, uh, making all facilities for research of our MTech and PhD students. 
and similarly we are conducting continuous training programs for the students and also for the farmers and industry people that is why industry people are coming forward for getting consultancy and also providing lot of sponsor research projects so apart from uh, funding agency like ADF, dbt dst and other government organization we are getting lot of uh, uh, industry sponsor projects so that is why we are able to run uh, with a, a good uh, income almost 30 to 40 percent of our income we are making our own that is why the ministry of processing industries is providing enough fund for creating infrastructure facility so the, after the program we will visit remaining uh, retreats so what some of the introduction said uh, i can probably say that uh, niptam tanjavur team is a wonderful team you can't get anywhere in the world so i I can't express, but really, so making these wonderful facilities and uh, e continuous events and all those things, uh, really with the support of this team only. Then we come to our founder, our founder director, uh, Dr. V. Subramaniam. Uh, as our uh, dean research pointed out, Dr. Venkatesh Research pointed out, we can say father of food technology because he was the instrumental for uh, starting the CFTRI Mysore with the support of uh, central government. He created that institute. He was the founder and founder director. Then after his retirement, with his own money, he started a small lab at Thiruvarur and it was uh, uh, grown like anything, IACPT, IA, uh, PPRC, IACPT, IAPT. Uh, we are going to see the video, the, our growth. Apart from that, he created one more laboratory in the Philippines. So he was, uh, uh, there are people who has worked along with him, still with us, they know the, his, uh, uh, how much effort he put, because he was a native of uh, Sirgali and he did his chemistry in Indian Institute of Science, but he worked a lot on food technology and he created so many papers, so many technologies. Still, we can say that uh, um, powder, milk powder, he was created that milk powder. So, Amul is uh, uh, utilizing the technology. Still, his family members are getting um, uh, money from that uh, technology. That is what that patented technology was taken over by the Amul. So, it's a great visionary. We have to, uh, I don't know how to express, because of this, only now we become in the, uh, INA status in shoot. So his uh, dream is coming true, still we have to grow a lot, still we have to uh, create so many, not only facilities, we have to start uh, new courses, new programs and we have to do lot of service to the nation. Because the objective of this institute started was only preserving the high moisture paddy in the Delta region. But his dream was big, that is why still we are growing, we believe that still he is with us and he is supporting us for each and every activity in the institute. So we are going to play the video now, just you can play the video, you can see. Vision of the great leader in food technology. Dr. Subramanian was born on 16th of September 1902 in Sirkari, Tanjau. of Biochemistry at Indian Institute of Science, Bayanwalur for Masters in Biochemistry. In 1927, he graduated with Doctor of Science from the University of London. After his return to India, he was appointed as a lecturer in the Department of Biochemistry, IISC. In 1929, he was appointed as the Professor and Head, Department of Biochemistry, IISC. In 1948, Dr. Supramanian was appointed as the Planning Officer for the CSIR, CFTRI, and became the first Director of CFTRI. In 1969, he started a research and development laboratory in the modern rice mill complex of Tinjawur Cooperative Marketing Federation at Tiruvarur. The mandate of the laboratory was to seek solutions for preserving high moisture paddy. In 1972, it was upgraded as a national laboratory with the name Paddy Processing Research Center. It focused on research on post-harvest processing and preservation of the of many awards mainly, Research Medal of the Royal Agricultural Society, Padmashri, Rafi Ahmad Kitwa E Award, Babcock Heart Award of the Institute of Food Technologists. First Frieshland Award, I few to name. 
Moreover, he was affiliated to several societies with designations including Founder President of AFSPI, Fellow of Royal Institute of Chemistry, President of Society of Biological Chemists, Fellow of National Institute of Sciences of India. His major scientific contributions were development of a mole baby sometime during 1979. So now this year we are celebrating International Year of Millers. So we are uh, uh, proposing lot of projects to different various organizations and uh, this under process. And um, our Ministry of Purpose Industry also funding lot of uh, uh, events. And we are uh, planning to organize mega events at Bangalore, Bangalore, Chennai, Kolkata, and Mumbai on Miller Summit. That is also under process. Already dates were fixed and it is under process. Apart from that, we are also providing a lot of training programs and consultancy on the millets. Another important thing, uh, our students, our science club students created uh, uh, the photo of our founder, Dr. V. Subramaniam, using the millets. So it was created long, but last, uh, that is founder, the, we used to celebrate our uh, birthday uh, during September 16, uh, as open day. That time they were created and uh, now, uh, uh, I request our uh, chief guest, Dr. Digivit J.S. sir, to release that photograph. Sir, please uh, come on stage, sir, please. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. So, thank you to the Science Club students, particularly in Harini and Palaji team. So, so great effort and the great, great uh, the thought, thought of utilizing the millet for creating on photograph. Then we used to recognize our faculty and staff members during the uh, anniversary of our founder director uh, with uh, different awards. So, uh, Dr. V. Subramaniam Endowment Best Scientist Award this year goes to Dr. Venkata Chalabadi and, uh, um, and Dr. Ashish Rashan. Both are sharing the award. And uh, please clap. Huh? Okay, that applause. Yeah. Because getting this Best Scientist Award is not easy because of their tireless effort and uh, output created in terms so really we are proud today is with us anyway we are going to play the video you can see his uh, career from college to till now uh, apart from that i want to say few words because some of us have the uh, experience with him at the university of manitoba uh, we went there and we were with him. So the thing is, he was uh, vice president when I visited 2010. And after that, one by one, a lot of our faculty visited and a lot of students went there. The thing is, uh, the vice president is uh, that much high post next to vice chancellor, having a lot of uh, administrative work and other things. But the thing is, uh, punctuality, once time is fixed, fixed. That is what uh, is we got to learn uh, the punctuality and um, uh, the, the once the time is provided, that time he will finish everything. Even if we submit on paper, he used one day he told, come and get it on 4 o'clock. I am waiting, it was time was 3.45, 4 
then I got a call so I am leaving outside for some work I completed the paper please come outside the lab you come and collect it so students we should not wait for him that's what the, the one thing another thing he used to always talk about the science and science 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 so I don't want to tell much about things I think they covered in the video I request uh, to play the video now
the Digri and Manju Jaya Suraj Meet Scholarship in Biosystems Engineering. Dr. Jayas has delivered more than 140 invited talks around the globe. Dr. Jayas has supervised more than 100 postgraduate and graduate students. Niftamti proudly welcomes Dr. Degreen S. Jayas to Dr. Rudi Subramanian and the Miss Lecture Thanks to the team, those who have collected the information and uh, created the video. I think he's the only person uh, working more than four decades on grain storage ecosystem. So working on a single field and creating so many papers, technologies and uh, industry tie-ups is not easy. And really, uh, we are uh, proud that uh, having that much experienced person with us as a distinguished professor, former uh, vice president, University of Manitoba, and incoming president and vice chancellor of uh, uh, University of uh, Lethbridge, Calgary. Uh, so really, thanks a lot for accepting our invitation and being with us and delivering the endowment lecture, doctor. On behalf of Niptam family, once again, I welcome you for this event. Uh, once again, thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are extremely privileged to have with us our chief guest, Dr. Dick Wichess, distinguished professor, University of Manitoba. Sir served as vice president, research and international University of Manitoba, and will be taking charges as the seventh president and vice chancellor of the University of Lethbridge on July 1st, 2023. As a leader and researcher, Dr. Jess is an inspiration. He has mentored students and scientists from over 20 countries in the state-of-the-art research facility, Canadian Beat Board Center for Grain Storage Research. His research findings and contributions, recommendations are being implemented across continents. His efforts for Indian grain storage research and human resource development are crucial. Importantly, over 10 masters and doctoral students of our very institute are extremely fortunate to have worked under, sir, under his supervision during various degree programs. With this introduction, on behalf of Niftam Tanjaur, I invite Dr. M. Loganathan, Director in Charge, to present the Endowment Lecture Award and citation to our respected Chief Guest, Dr. Dick Vijayas. Dr. Lokanathan, staff, uh, faculty members, uh, students uh, of NIFTAM. It's a very overwhelming experience. Uh, so the team, thank you for preparing a video. Uh, I don't know how you found all this material. Uh, so thank you. I had a conversation with uh, uh, Dr. Moses about what should be the topic. Uh, as uh, so what I decided to do was that to give you the changes which are happening in the food industry, the recent trends which are happening in the food industry, as you can uh, also see with me, is the automation in the food processing industry is increasing. So what the arrows up uh, imply that there is an increase happening in that particular area. And that could be development of the sensors, for example, development of Internet of Things, uh, development of the... Uh, electronic if you want to eat a spoiled food or the food which is uh, does not taste good or does have an off odor in it or is crawling with insects uh, or uh, microflora is growing on it so quality plays a very important role and food industry is adopting both the bioimaging or uh, the machine vision technology uh, whether they are doing that using the optical imaging thermal imaging microwave imaging uh, soft X-ray imaging or many other techniques including MRI and labs today this morning 
and I congratulate the team here, uh, particularly uh, uh, Director Loknathan and the uh, former directors who have uh, developed a very unique infrastructure at this institution. It is a, a world-class uh, infrastructure. Another thing uh, which is happening in the food industry, earlier uh, the raw material was received and it was processed into the finished good. And a lot of time, the, only the raw material, incoming raw material was uh, sampled for the quality or a quality was assessed and the final product. But now, there are uh, quality is being monitored at multiple points. And particularly those of you who are working in the, to consume the food which is produced in 100 kilometer uh, radius. Uh, so that means uh, your diet has to be structured around what is produced in the region. Uh, and now in India, I'm sure the, 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 that concept can be easily applied because uh, uh, the climate is so good, you can produce almost anything, any time of the year uh, and to meet that requirement. Uh, but certainly in countries like Canada, it is a lot more difficult uh, because we uh, only have a three month or four month growing season, so we cannot grow things in the winter time, but uh, even that is increasing by looking at the greenhouse, ga uh, greenhouse uh, production and the multi to meet that demand. And there are the plant-based proteins. So the animal uh, protein consumption is going down, and that means people are consuming less meat, uh, now, which is not good for the uh, livestock industry, but certainly good for the plant-based industry. Uh, and there is always, a, uh, I would say, debate uh, that which protein is good for you, and, but they are also better for the environment. And those of you who read about climate change, the animal production of the animal protein per capita or per kilogram basis contributes four times uh, than the animal, plant protein in terms of the uh, greenhouse gas uh, production. Uh, so the people are bo for both regions, for the health regions, uh, as well as for the, uh, for the Im uh, less impact on the environment, they are moving to plant-based protein, uh, which that means is uh, like 20 years ago, if you went to a restaurant in uh, uh, most of the Western world, you would have a hard time finding a vegetarian dish. Uh, they might give you some uh, green vegetables. Uh, the best restaurant might uh, boil some vegetables for you. That would be your diet. But now, I would say almost every restaurant would have at least three or four vegetarian dishes. So that movement is certainly increasing the vegetarianism uh, uh, in, in the uh, area. And there is a, a, a food industry in general is trying to ad adopt green technologies. And uh, I think certainly the center here on non-thermal processing promotes many of those technologies. So, uh, so the green technologies are being adopted, adopted by the food industry. The list is too long. I think I have three slides. And when I was sitting down, what are the trends? Uh, so I will slowly take you through all that. Another thing which uh, some of it would be, I would say, COVID. Even before COVID, the home delivery of foods was increasing. The people were cooking less at home, and they were getting food, cooked food delivered from the restaurants. Uh, so that industry certainly is growing. Uh, Internet of Thing is being incorporated in the food system, and uh, right from the delivery from the household, so like refrigerator, for example, nowadays most of the refrigerator have the capability to monitor the food product, which is in the fridge, and as you consume, it prepares a list for you what to order at the next order time, and if you automatically program, uh, you want them replenished, it can automatically place the order, and then order can be delivered to your place. So it's, automation is going to that level in terms of the Internet of Things, and that uh, creates a lot of opportunity for the food technologists in terms of the, uh, uh, developing the uh, techniques, but the, the creates jobs for people in the delivery industry, in the food sorting industry, in the packaging industry to deliver that. Uh, and I already mentioned automation of home appliances. Uh, the awareness in the consumers uh, consuming healthy diet is a, at, a, at a serious rise, I would say, and most people now are uh, watching their diet as well as incorporating exercise in it. So if uh, you are not into that habit, I would encourage you to get into that habit uh, because sooner you start, better it is in the long run. Uh, and many, many people do that. There are, I'm not saying that everybody does that. There are still people who have not started their exercise routine or watching the diet. Food is the term used uh, in North America. Uh, 
uh, but food you would produce and then distribute in the in the food chain uh, food waste is a major concern and uh, uh, the people are challenging now the governments and the in, uh, and the industry to reduce that food waste globally uh, Again, if you have read the uh, United Nations uh, did a, a study which showed that one third of the food, there are a lot of resources to produce that food, and uh, you are not consuming that food, and that food waste then is causing, the, in the production it's causing the greenhouse gases, then the waste is itself causes the greenhouse gases, uh, so the utilization of food has to increase, uh, and the people are now started challenging the food industry, as well as the, uh, the governments, so the policies are being developed to reduce the food waste and I'm sure India probably is doing, doing the similar things. Uh, the one thing which I want to point out in the, in the food waste area is that a uh, lot of research is now happening uh, and that's where I think uh, uh, contributions from uh, groups like you would come in the future is that taking the waste, food waste material and not just making the fertilizer or bio, uh, which was not being done, and that certainly is helping farmer increase the income. So again, from a uh, food science and technology perspective, there is a need to develop those primary processing tools, which then, then can be shared with the producers. Uh, and I already mentioned consumer awareness of the food quality. Consumers are demanding high quality food, which is putting a lot of, uh, I would say, both the incentive and pressure on the food industry to, ma uh, to demonstrate how their uh, quality and to the extent that they are asking the food industry to demonstrate the traceability of chemicals in the food production as well as in the processing. Uh, another uh, uh, phenomena which is happening uh, is the consumption of the whole grain diet uh, and the multigrain diet. Uh, so in the, again, if you go 20, 30 years ago, you would have a hard time finding anything but white bread. And whiter the bread, better it was considered. Nowadays, you go to the supermarket, the section which occupies the white bread is probably one-third, uh, and the two-third is whole wheat bread, multigrain bread, and multigrain product. So there is a certainly a huge uh, demand in, uh, in terms of the producing those products. Now, you would say how difficult it would be, uh, because if your processing plant is all geared towards producing white bread, then when you switch to a, f a whole grain uh, flour, for example, what are its rheological properties. So the impact it has on the processing industry and the food science and technology is uh, tremendous. And how to then produce those products and then market and distribute those products. The other area uh, where uh, the trend is increasing is because of the, especially the concept of that 100 kilometer diet concept is which is getting the people that have started uh, approaching more uh, frozen food. So they would, uh, locally produced material then get frozen and then it's used throughout the year. So they certainly have home. Uh, online purchasing and shipping is on the rise. Uh, and then the plastic packaging uh, uh, has increased for the food safety. And this is contradictory to what uh, uh, environmentalists are saying that we should be reducing the use of the plastic. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, because of the delivery of the food, uh, significant cooked food now comes in the plastic container and some of those plastic containers are not recyclable. Uh, so the need for recyclable plastic container for delivery of the food uh, certainly raises. So it's a contradictory in that sense. Uh, food prices are increasing and I'm sure that's uh, happening here also. So in Canada, at least in the last uh, year, uh, the food prices have gone up between 10 to 12 percent depending on what kind of food material you're looking at. Uh, and it has uh, certainly impact on the climate change, uh, particularly the food waste has significant impact. And the consumers, uh, the sustainability or 4R principle, uh, those uh, are coming more, the, are the consumer driven. Consumers are asking that you should apply the right chemical uh, at the right place, at the right, does the assessment of the quality. Like when you go and buy, uh, buy a fruit, you would look at uh, uh, uniformity of the color, uniformity of the shape. Uh, uh, you would probably touch it with your hand and see if it is uh, not uh, uh, damaged at certain locations. So, so you do assessment of the quality. Uh, processor is uh, on the other hand, because they are using that material as a raw ingredient, uh, which then they process and then the material is sent to the retailer. Uh, retailer hope to have that food quality maintained for the duration before it goes back to the consumer uh, as, a, as a finished product and consumer assesses the quality there, but they are looking at different thing in this case. 
is the packaging properly done? Is the packaging has any uh, holes in it? Or if it was a product, does it have any microflora growing on it? So, so they are looking at different aspects in the finished product than on the raw material. Uh, so when they are assessing the quality at different level, they are looking at both the external features as well as internal features. Uh, so external features typically are based on size, shape, uh, color, and the surface roughness of the materials, whereas internal features are looking at the protein, carbo conditions, such as high and low temperature, or moisture, or humidity. So when you go to the food industry, so far the food industry has worked on the principle that the, as the material comes in, the first in, first out. So the material, material comes in, you process the material which came in first. But they are not paying attention to the quality because uh, the material which came uh, two days uh, before uh, may not be as good a quality as the material came in today. So by knowing the quality of the food material as it is coming in, you can process the uh, material which is about to spoil first. So it can enhance by having the integrated quality system and integrated technology for assessing the quality of incoming food, you can improve the processing of the, uh, uh, of the food and it certainly uh, improve the logistics in the food processing. So there is certainly a lot of ro room for improving the logistic by monitoring quality automatically and monitoring that quality. So typical uh, quality monitoring of the food industry is done by the manual labor and uh, you probably have seen this uh, when you have gone on some of the tours in the in the industry where people are sorting the uh, fruits and vegetables uh, manually uh, now there are some issues with that they are subjective inconsistent uh, uh, tedious and very slow possibility of cross contamination is there when humans are involved uh, fatigue and tiredness of the people uh, can affect the results uh, during that uh, assessment of the quality and it certainly is not suitable for the continuous monitoring uh, the, as I was talking about if you want to improve the logistic by knowing the quality on an ongoing basis uh, you can't do that when manual labor is involved uh, it is expensive uh, and you would say why it is expensive when you take the labor cost into consideration it becomes very expensive the automated systems would be capital in, uh, uh, intensive at the beginning because you have to invest uh, resources to Im implement the technology but once it is implemented the uh, operational cost goes down so when you take the total cost of monitoring the food quality and then automated systems are much cheaper than the human based systems and need to improve the monitoring speed in many industries uh, so that you can improve that so as I was saying the concept like in this particular example every ingredient which arrives at the food processing industry whether ingredient one to n quality has to be monitored of that uh, that ingredient then every unit operation as the material goes through the processing the quality has to be monitored so that's what is referred to as a process monitoring and if you introduce additional ingredients like for example spices might be added at the end so the the ingredient m coming in in the middle of the processing its quality has to be monitored and naturally the quality of the finished product has to be monitored so you can see the quality industry is the food industry is very heavily focused on monitoring the quality and improving the products uh, for the consumer now research uh, plays a significant role in all of this uh, and that's what educational institutions contributions are uh, because it's critical for the the two component which come from research research certainly generate the ideas generates the solutions to the problem which are brought by the industry to the research, uh, research community. But the, 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 I would say the most significant contribution of the research is that because everybody who works on a master's project or undergraduate thesis project uh, or a doctoral project, they then go and work in the industry. And if they did not have that training, they would not have the personnel to uh, propel the food industry. So that's where the major contribution of the research is in terms of the personnel required to support the industry. Uh, the, naturally, the research infrastructure, and I'm sure uh, NIFTM's research infrastructure when students are uh, deciding which university or which institution they want to go and do their studies, they look at that infrastructure, then make the decision, this is the place where I want to do my master's or doctoral program, for example. So it attracts the right uh, kind of uh, researchers to the, to the uh, facility. Uh, it's certainly critical for developing partnership with the industry uh, and, grow, uh, and uh, 
again, if the infrastructure was not there, industry is not going to come to ask you to solve their problem. So they, the infrastructure and strength of the research program dictates what, uh, how the industry would find out about the, about the program and how the industry would seek out to work with the institution. Uh, a student trained in the research uh, environment are very likely to start their own startups. And particularly these days, uh, I think Indian government is spending significantly and encouraging research startups. Uh, and those students who are not exposed to the research environment are not going to be uh, uh, taking, that, taking that up. So it certainly has a lot of opportunities. And even the social science research, which uh, NIFTM is not uh, focused on, but it leads to the better policies, uh, better uh, technologies, and improve the lives of the citizens. Uh, facilitating collaborative research, because if we want to bring the industry and the academics together to solve the problems, but also then develop the solutions to their problem, uh, then we need to encourage the collaborative research. And uh, any complex issue re requires not only one discipline, but multidisciplinary approach. And that I have been promoting for, uh, for a long time, that, and, uh, and certainly my own research has always been multidisciplinary, and I encourage that. Uh, unfortunately, in uh, many institutions in India, that uh, institutions are focused on a, a limited number of disciplines, uh, so the need certainly is there to increase the multidisciplinarity. And uh, those, that multidisciplinary teams are the ones which would have problems which society is facing. And they, when we develop the collaborations, they could be local, regional, national, or global, and certainly that need to be promoted. And the advancement in ICT uh, further helps, and the COVID has uh, demonstrated that we can work uh, without being in physical contact and do a lot of collaborative projects. Uh, so using the technology, we can certainly do that uh, collaborations globally. Uh, the few things to keep in mind if you are developing the collaborative projects, uh, particularly uh, with multiple institutions. Uh, you need to have a lot of discussions up front, so you can have co-supervision of the students, for example, in terms of the co-funding and co opinion of others. Uh, value their contributions, uh, even though, uh, like if you are working with an industry who has, uh, uh, industry owner who has not gone to the university, doesn't mean they don't have expertise. They do have expertise, they do have a knowledge, and uh, as a researcher, we should be willing to listen to that and share uh, and appreciate their knowledge and incorporate that in our thinking process. Uh, so uh, we need to value the diverse perspective in those solutions, discuss early who would do what, uh, what contributions they would make, how they would be recognized, and having those discussions up front uh, eliminates the problems uh, which occur towards the end of the project. Mm, and then again, the, how the IP would be shared, how the authorship would be shared, who would be acknowledged in the, in the process. Uh, proceeds from the IP, how would they be shared, uh, who would share the royalty income, for example, and, uh, and then if the issues is a political or social uh, nature, no matter how small, I would say deal with it immediately, because you don't want those issues to fester for a long time, but they become very serious problems, so having the open mind in developing uh, collaborations, clear lines of communications are very important and encouraged. Uh, allow people to raise crazy ideas uh, and crazy questions throughout the discussion uh, because that opens up the uh, different uh, solution lines or different uh, 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 processes. But, uh, and we are human beings, Res uh, the conflict would arise. So have a discussion how would we resolve that conflict. Uh, do we use a third party to deal with, uh, deal with it? Do we talk to somebody who knows the field to uh, help us resolve that problem? So have that discussion up front how that would be uh, eliminated, who will have what authority on decision making. Uh, somebody has to make a decision in terms of what uh, next step need to be. Uh, establish the pro protocols for data sharing. And industry, a lot of time, would say we want to control all the data. Institutions, on the other hand, want to publish the data. Uh, so having that discussion up front eliminates those issues uh, arising late. Uh, otherwise, the industry would say, well, we told you not to publish the data, you publish, then you are going in the court case, and you are spending a lot of time and energy. So having that discussion up front, uh, similarly, who would uh, contributing what equipment, who would be writing what sections of the front helps in the co developing collaborations. And develop a habit of answering the queries from uh, your research trainees and team members very quickly. And even if it is 
if somebody has a question about a project, just saying, I will get back to you next day, or I will get back to you in three days. So they know that you have, you have seen their question. Uh, and so that open line of communication certainly helps in developing a strong collaborations. Uh, and if you are working with two or three different labs, and whether the lab is the academic lab or industry lab, making sure exchanging the students between the labs is a good idea so they get to appreciate what problems they are facing in their workplace uh, and abide by any, if there are any uh, agreements have been uh, developed and signed, abide by the conditions in those agreements, whether it's a material transfer agreement, military protocol, and uh, discuss the training requirement. So if, if uh, you have a, uh, equipment which you are going to contribute to the, uh, to the uh, project, then who is going to train on that use of that equipment, who is going to run that equipment and uh, clarifying that. And certainly one of the things uh, academic institutions do is they train students on using those equipment. So we want to make sure that proper training is provided to the students on the use of equipment and patients do the work, students really are not learning. So we need to integrate the training aspect for a student in our discussions. Next, I want to take a few minutes about the combination or the transfer of the knowledge from the, uh, from the academic institutions. Uh, so, so there are many definitions. Uh, uh, there's a writer who uh, talks about commercialization quite a bit, uh, Joseph uh, uh, St. Peter. Uh, he, he talks about introduction of new goods, new methods of production, uh, opening of new markets, uh, conquest of new uh, sources of supply, carrying out of new organization of any industry, all that fits in the commercialization and innovation. Uh, for me, the simple definition is uh, taking the idea and converting it to dollars, uh, where dollar could be money, not only the money, but it could be uh, improving the lives of the people, enhancing the cultural experience. So that's how I define the commercialization. Uh, they basically improve the economic, social, well-being of the people uh, anywhere in the, in the, in the world. Uh, the mechanism for the commercialization are the licensing and a spin-off. There are two, uh, which means that you have developed a technique, you then license off, to, uh, give a license to a company or license to a partner who would then take that technology and incorporate and improve their process. Or a spin-off is that you uh, yourself or give it to somebody who creates a company. So licensing and uh, a spin-off uh, are two different mechanisms where you, the licensing could be of the product process or the improvement to these products and processes. Uh, knowledge transfer uh, can be, again, could be happen in terms of the new products on the market, improved products on the market, or processes, uh, policies. And sometimes it's difficult to attribute. Uh, what that means is that if uh, a guideline uh, on the dietary guideline, for example, you can't really market the dietary guideline. You then distribute that, and if people start adopting that dietary guideline, then you are impacting the society in a big way, but you may not. Uh, is another way of doing that, uh, and certainly, which I mentioned earlier, movement of the trained students or trained people, uh, postdocs and research associate, is the best way to uh, transfer the knowledge, uh, knowledge to the partners. Uh, and outreach, uh, which could be specific solutions, uh, use your bulletins, guidelines, all those are the mechanisms to transfer the knowledge. Uh, looking at the research to commercialization, so in this graph I'm going to quickly take you through. So if you look at the intensity on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis is both the research or commercialization in the two different graphs. So when you are of the university or like NIFTM, would be considered academic institutions. They, do, they are in the spectrum where they do more research and less commercialization, although NIFTA may be more towards the, uh, towards the right, uh, depending you have is referred to as the valley of death, where nobody is working or nobody is willing to invest the money, uh, other than sometimes you might have the family and friends and the, uh, uh, um, family members or angel investors might uh, invest some, some funding to develop the product further. And once you have developed the pr product to a reasonable level, then what is referred to as venture capitalists would come in and they would then try to take that technology or the, that idea and move to the market. So a lot of ideas from the research landscape die in the, what is referred to as valley of death. And that's where uh, if you can develop any programs, if you can develop any 
uh, innovative solutions to get the people out of that valley of death, uh, keeping in mind uh, the, the big, so for researchers, for example, the whole research, whole science is founded based on the integrity of the, uh, of the system. If a one researcher do, does something wrong, and then other researchers build on that because you never start everything from a sketch. So you're always building on the previous research. So if somebody has done something wrong, you can see that wrong then propagates for a very long time. And uh, so, so the whole research is dependent on the uh, integrity of the researchers. Unfortunately, there are some researchers who do not follow the norms of the integrity and then it does uh, ruin the science and ruins the name of the research community as a whole. Uh, industry, on the other hand, relies on the integrity because it has a lot of uh, implications for them. It builds their reputation. People get included. Uh, improper acknowledgement is given, and uh, proper. Uh, and again, uh, I have not worked in the Indian system, so I don't know. But uh, usually, when human subjects are involved, then you need to human ethics protocol approval or animal ethics, biohazards and radiation safety. All those certificates have to be in place. To give you some examples, the kind of penalty in Canada which are get imposed, uh, like if somebody did the fabrication of the data, for example, in this particular example, their grant was terminated and they were ineligible to apply for any grant for five years, as an example. So it has a huge impact, potential impact on the researcher. Uh, plagiarism, their grant was terminated and ineligible to apply, hold for life. So you can imagine the impact it would have if somebody was young and they got uh, breach was proven on the, uh, on the plagiarism, uh, it basically ruins their uh, whole uh, misrepresentation in the application where complete information was not provided. In this case, they couldn't apply grant for two years. Uh, mismanagement of funds, uh, inappropriate use of the funds, they were required to re uh, re re refund ineligible expenses, grant was terminated and ineligible to apply uh, or hold grant for life. So that's a significant uh, uh, deterrent. Uh, and failure to comply with agency policies. Again, grant was terminated and ineligible to apply or hold grant for three years. So these are some of the examples which the penalties are imposed. Uh, so that certainly helped researchers, uh, to be honest, uh, although most researchers are very honest, but there are some uh, who, uh, I would say, do not follow the expected norm for research integrity and they are the one who then create a bad name for the research community as a whole. And when I say research community, I include both industry research community as well as the academic research community. Uh, with this brief, uh, I thank you very much and thank you NIFTM for uh, inviting me and honoring me with this award. Thank you very much, sir. Niftim family thanks you once again for your presence, sir. Every year, in recognition of performance, Niftim Tanjaur presents merit awards to faculty and staff. As I read out the names of the awardees, I invite you to please come onto the stage. I request our respected chief guest, sir, to please give the award in the presence of our director. Dr. V. Subramanian, Best Scientist Award 2023. This award comes with the cash prize of rupees 1 lakh for research and academic purposes and a citation. This year, the award is shared by two faculties. Dr. N. Venkatach Lepati, Dean in Charge, Research, Consultancy and International Relations. and Dr. Ashish Rosen, Associate Professor, Department of Food Safety and Quality Testing. <laughs> Dr. V. Subramanian, Best Technical Staff Award 2023, 
The award comes with a cash prize of rupees 50,000 for research and academic purposes and a citation. This year, the award goes to Dr. P. Rajendran, Senior Technician, Department of Food Biotechnology. Recognizing Best Performance in Ministerial Service, Srimati Kalai Mani, Senior Technician, Administrative Office, Neftim Tanjal. Please be seated. Congratulations to the, to the awardees. To conclude, I invite Dr. S. Shanmugasundaram, Registrar in Charge, Niftim Tanjao, to please deliver the vote of thanks. Respected Chief Guest, Director, Faculties, Staffs, and my dear students, it's my privilege and honor to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. First of all, I have the pleasant duty of thanking Dr. Digvir S. Jayars, incoming president and vice president, University of Lethbridge, Canada, for gracing today's beautiful function and delivering the Dr. V. Subramaniam Endowment Lecture. Thank you very much, sir, for your interesting and thought-provoking address. Sir. On behalf of total Niptam family, as a token of gratitude, I request our director, sir, to present Momento to him, sir. My very sincere thanks to our director, sir, for his constant support and guidance to organize in this event in grand manner. On behalf of Niptam family, my hearty congratulations to Dr. V. Subramaniam, Best Scientist and Staff Award winners, Dr. N. Vengrajalabadi, Dr. Ashish Srasan, Dr. P. Rajendran, and Srimadi Kalaimani. Also, I would like to thank various committees for organizing this event, as well as total Niptam family, including deans, HODs, faculties, staffs, and students for their stable support to organize this event successfully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Please stand up for the national anthem. जनगण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे Please be seated. Uh, I is on stage with your awards for a group photograph, please, with the awards. <laughs> 